all you spiritual people out there. <laughs> what is it, Jen? It's 919 on 91919. Ooh, baby, <laughs> I'm just saying. It's 919 on 919. Well, how do you do it if it says to do it and you can't even get to it? Oh, there it sure. is. Hold on. Yay. Yay. I'm sorry. Hey, we're live. Can you tell? Hi. You know, my big old fat fingers can't do any of this. Oh, weird. Oh, oh yeah. there it is. It's Happy late. 9 19, 19 at 919. That's right. We'll do it again. Central time. Happy 919. Happy 919. <laughs> Happy 919. Oh, at right. at, at 919. 9 <laughs> yes. We're in the middle of something. I'm like, hey, it's about to be 919. <laughs> hey Laura. Hey Julie. <coughs> so welcome to the Madhouse. Did you know? Did you know? Yes, he does. Why, yes, he does. I pray. I bet he didn't mean to. <laughs> hey, Jewel, you want to come on? Hello, Miss Susie. How are you? Well, we were celebrating that it's 919. 19. And we just decided to come on and talk about it, to be quite honest. At 919. At 919. So it was 919 on 919, 19. And so we were being silly, honestly, and have nothing hugely prophetic or, <clears throat> no. or insightful or uh, courageous. Although I did eat paleo again tonight, and that's very courageous. We're being <laughs> Well, hello, hello. Did you go live on And there are some people who are on the This is Jules Gregory. Got on or but we added it. Hey, hey, it's on purpose. Jules, Jules, some insightful because there are eight people. Regarding the, 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 the police, since we're so impulsive, I can barely hear y'all. 
Give us community, community awareness, awareness of the police. Community awareness? Give us some awareness about the people. That's okay. <laughs> I think I'm messing y'all's video up, so I'll just leave and watch. Jules is actually all the time. He's the ace of the school district. Average Joe. It's actually right out of the way. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, maybe I was just in a weird spot. I don't know. <laughs> let me get a fist. Let me get a fist for you. Okay. Now you're All right. So tell me again what you were wanting to say. Okay. We some kind of this time of year for the norm regarding the department. All I heard was regarding the police department. Talk to the person. There are four people. Talk to the office about the department. I don't know what you're doing. This is a silly. Let me let, I'll let you video. It's, I can't hear y'all on my end. Okay. Maybe next time we'll figure it out. Today uh, in the Houston area and the Katy area, we had a storm, and I actually went to Costco thinking, oh, yeah, I'll just slip in, and I'll slip out. That didn't happen. I literally slipped in the water, like, um, up my ankle, and then to my knees, and then came out. You know, you gotta just keep rolling. Oh, I know. And so, how about y'all? Did y'all experience water where you were? Is everyone safe? What's happening out there in Facebook friend land? On 9 19, 19. On 9 19. We got on. Okay, listen. This is why we got on originally. We got on because it was 9 19, 19 at 9 19. And so, we were just being funny. And then, bam, like 10 people joined us just like that. And we didn't have anything to say, honestly. We were literally in the middle of something else. And... We just happened to notice the clock, and she busted out the camera. I busted so. it up, because you know there I you like go. that. <clears throat> and then um, Jules, uh, I think it was on accident, pushed the come on video. I said, yeah, let's bring Jules on video. So we clicked on video, and he's like, whoa, what are y'all doing? <laughs> I'm so happy, though, because he's been on my heart so much. I miss my brother. I love you, Jules. Please watch this again. I think that we will probably have Jules on one day, but we will plan it. And that kind of thing. Anyhow, today is 9 19 19. And um, I was watching a video today on shifting. And Jen had a, a word in the middle of the night on shifting or felt the presence of shifting. And then I had a dream this morning and it was about shifting. Just wondering if any of you are feeling the shifting in September. Um, in number world, this is the ninth month, and the ninth month, nine, usually means harvest. So I wonder what we're harvesting, and I wonder what's coming that we're going to get to harvest over the next few months, because next month, that's October, man. Actually, the word shift, I, we hadn't used that term yet, but I guess that was what I sensed, but um, you know how Facebook pop, pops up your memories? that you posted like a year ago or five years ago or whatever. I'm pretty sure it was, to, it was either today or yesterday. I think it was today where it said my memory from a while back was <clears throat> I had posted a line that said, if I see the, see or hear the word shift one more time this month, dot, dot, dot. And um, 
I don't remember exactly the circumstances, but I remember that it was a theme that, like, literally everywhere I went, it was, like, everybody was saying or <laughs> typing um, the this word shift. <laughs> Harvest the spirit. the spirit. I received that, and I believe that. That's cool. Hello, Danette. Good to see you. Good to see everyone. Let's see. Who else do we have here? We have Jules. Adele, we have Paige. Hi, Paige. You beautiful woman. You and I, we need to have a lavender date. Man, life is busy, isn't it? But I love you, and I think of you every time I go by Cocohoto. Hello, Adele. I'm so glad y'all got there safe. I think that most of these people popped off when we got silly. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Rita. Hey, Sister Sandy. Hello, 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 Angela. Hello, Becky. Hello, Susie and Julie. Hello, Laura. And I apologize if we got a little silly. <laughs> we actually, we were re just really being impromptu. And, you know, when you're normally getting online because you do have something to say, and then you get online and you just really don't have anything to say, I guess it does look kind of foolish. So I apologize for that. <laughs> it's, but it, it's normal to you. But we can come up with some. Hey, I know what we're going to do. Hold on. I got it. I just want, I look like I have a lamp coming out of my head. I think I'll do a scripture. Yeah. Let's find 919. Okay. Let's go John. Go ahead. John 919. We're going to rock it. Let's see. 919 and John. Is this your son who you say was born blind? How is it that he now sees? Wow. I bet that was a loaded question. Hi, Kayla. We're doing silly impromptu. Bible reading. Hi, JC. How are you? Hi, Don Keithley. Good to see you. <laughs> so, of one, of what, of, of all days for people to pop on. No, it's all. When we're being kind of silly, but uh, we just we saw the clock. It was nine nineteen, and then we went, "Hey, it's nine nineteen nineteen at nine nineteen." <laughs> and so we got online to have fun and be silly about it. And then decided to do something spiritual. Go ahead. What you yeah, got? So she read John. Actually, I, I read John nine nineteen. Um, Act nine nineteen was part of my video this morning that I did. It was when um, Ananias prayed over Saul and uh, said, called him brother Saul, and it talked about community. Brother, brother Saul. But in nineteen, it said that's when it says that he took food and was strengthened. So that was cool. I was thinking Psalm ninety one nine because we have again nine one nine. So I looked that up. For you have made the Lord my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. And then verse 10. So no evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. Okay. So beautiful. He's our refuge. Yeah, he is. And Romans 9, 19. <laughs> out of context. Okay. Out of context. Hi, Peggy. How are you? 9, 19. Romans. This just doesn't sound reasonable at all. What gives God the right then to still blame anyone? Who can resist his will? Oh, ho, ho. Don Keithley could preach on that. I leave that for the Don Keithley. I do. I leave that for him. Okay, 1 Corinthians 9, 19. For those of you who want to be silly with us. So, in a sense, I am free from everyone's expectation or management, yet I have voluntarily enslaved myself to all people. This beats any other motivation to influence people. The ninth letter, find one nine nineteen. It's the ninth letter. I is the oh I is the ninth letter. Find I nine nineteen. Is and what about Isaiah nine nineteen? Isaiah nine nineteen. Just for you, Jules. Hi, Stacy. Good to see you. We're being kind of silly. If you can be silly, sometimes happy accidents. Hey. Think about all the things that have been invented, like through the World's Fair, like ice cream cones and many, many other things yeah. that are actually really important and useful. <laughs> they are useful. <clears throat> Let me go to Revelation because nothing else in here has got nine. Isaiah nine nineteen. I'm not sure the context of this. Go ahead. <clears throat> the fury of, by the fury of the Lord um, of hosts, the land is burned up, and the people are like fuel for the fire, and no man spares his brother. This is talking right. about wickedness going on and God's <laughs> anger with arrogance. So, yes, God doesn't like arrogance. 
I don't think he still liked arrogance, but I do have a new opinion now regarding arrogance. So this is the thing. Sometimes you can think somebody's being arrogant because they seem really, really confident. And sometimes it's because you're so stinking insecure. Yeah. And you're so stinking feeling so low self-esteem that when somebody gets around you that actually knows who they are, you're thinking they're all that in a bag of chips. I guess I need to go to church. <laughs> but actually, you know what? I'll send you some videos to watch. Instead of going to church, I'll send you a couple of videos. It'll probably beat church, dude. I'll send you a couple. Anyway, sometimes we can think that somebody else is arrogant. And so we're judging their heart. When, honestly, they may not be arrogant at all. Maybe they are very confident. Or maybe you're just very, very insecure. So anything that looks different than you makes you feel less than because they actually might even have a healthy confidence. I've definitely been that person before where I was, I felt very overwhelmed by someone's confidence and it felt very much like an overpowering, dominating, unhealthy thing. But actually most of those people, I've had some unhealthy people in my life as well. <clears throat> but most of the people I think just had a, had a confidence in who they are and I did not. And so it felt just, yeah. whoa, you're taking up a lot of oxygen in the room, dude. <laughs> yeah, when they're not taking up any. Any, any more than you are. Read um, Genesis 9.19. I was wondering about that. Genesis. The Message Bible the isn't, beginning. isn't broken up in scriptures. They're broken up as passages. You can't even find anything. Genesis 9.19. Genesis 9.19. We're going through 9.19 in the Bible. That's what we're doing. We're going 9.19 in the Bible. Because why? Because it's fun. Go ahead. Genesis 9.19. <laughs> These three were the sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was populated. Whoa, the whole earth? Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay, Exodus 9.19. No context, people. <laughs> now, therefore, send, bring your livestock and whatever you have in the field to safety, every man and beast that is found in the field and is not brought home, when the hail comes down on them, when they will the die. Hail? Hail, when the <laughs> hail comes down. That's H-A-I-L. Or when the H-E-L-L comes down. I know. I guess it depends on your whole prospect. You in Leviticus? That's just silly. Right? What? Go ahead and say it. Do it. I don't even. Rock it. So out of context. Oh, do it. 919. <clears throat> it's. <laughs> Bring it as for the portions of fat from the ox and from the ram, the fat tail and the fat covering and the kidneys and the lobe of the liver. That's it's it. about sacrifice. Yeah, you're going to have to figure that out. I'm going up to no, uh, numbers now. I got numbers. 919. Oh, you? I got numbers. Too. Okay, then I'll go to the next one. I thought we were going back and forth. Well, we were, but. Exodus, Leviticus, numbers. I, I know, but I was one. I was just one up on you. So. Yeah, okay, okay number, so I'm going to no, go to the next. <laughs> numbers 919. <laughs> even when the cloud lingered over the tabernacle for many days, the sons of Israel would keep the Lord's charge and not set out. That's cool. I like that, too. If you got any insight, go ahead. Hi, Carla. Hi, Sandy. We're going through um, the Bible. We're going through uh, the Word, and we're just reading the Scripture 919. Not for any reason other than at 919, we, just, we saw the clock and went, whoa, it's 919 on 919, 19. So now we're reading 919 throughout the Word. And so the Deuteronomy is... For I was afraid of the anger and hot displeasure with which the Lord was wrathful against you in order to destroy you. But the Lord listened to me that time also. Oh, that would be uh, Mr. Moses. We'll get to Psalms in just a minute. I see there's a comment about Psalms. Or Abraham, or <coughs> whoever's there right now. <laughs> all right, I got Joshua 919. <clears throat> oh, you got a good one. But all the leaders said to the whole congregation. Ooh, leaders. Yes, we were just talking about leaders. That. Dang. All the leaders said to the whole congregation, we have sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel, and now we cannot touch them. Wow, context. This is, was, uh, guess your context. Yeah, it was... <laughs> Uh, something about fighting against the people. Okay, Judges 919. If then you have dealt in truth and integrity with Jerubbaal, uh, Jerubbaal, 
and his house this day rejoice in Abimelech. Oh my gosh, Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. Mm, I sound like a threat. <laughs> there is no 919 in Ruth. So I'll read 1 Samuel 9, 19. Okay, I'll go to 2. Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me to the high place, for you shall eat with me today. And in the morning I will let you go and will tell you all that is on your mind. That was somebody with confidence, and he knew who, uh, who he was. Yeah, he did. <laughs> That'd be scary. You know, have you ever been around people, and you're like, Pastor Bob Phillips was like this. You'd be around him, and you'd think, Man, I know he knows something about me that I don't know. Mm. I know he knows everything about me. What's God telling him right now? I thought that I think about that about Pastor Bar Darren sometimes too, and Sheila actually. Okay, second, uh, First Kings nine nineteen because Second Samuel doesn't have. Okay, Jules wants you to read Psalm nine nineteen. Go okay. ahead and do it again. One, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He wasn't there. Well, and all the storage. This is nine nineteen in First Kings. And all the storage cities which Solomon had, even the cities for his chariots and the cities for his horsemen, and all that it pleased Solomon to build in Jerusalem, in Lebanon, and in all the land under his rule. That was first Kings. That was first Kings. Okay, that's second Kings. Then he sent out a second horseman who came to them and said, Thus says the king, Is it peace? And Jehu answered, What have you to do with peace? Turn behind me. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> While she's picking up songs, Oops, where did it go? I'm going to, um, hey, Jules, can you wait for us to get to it, or do you have to have it right now? It's only a few away. It's just a few away. Hang with us, Jules. Suffer through the scripture. Okay, just suffer through the scripture. Gosh, I haven't read this much Bible in a while. <laughs> okay, First Chronicles, <laughs> you heathen. First Chronicles 9.19. And Shalom, the son of Kor, the son of Abiasaph, the son of Korah, and his relatives of his father's house, the Korahites, were over the work of the service, keepers of the thresholds of the tent, and their fathers had been over the camp of the Lord, keepers of the entrance. Um, Second, Second Chronicles 9.19. Twelve lions were standing there on the six steps on the one side and on the other. Crap. Nothing like it was made for any other kingdom. This is talking about Solomon's temple. Oh, wow. I was fixing to say, if those are real, I'd be running. <laughs> Nehemiah. 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 Okay, now I'm going to Nehemiah. Oh, okay, so yeah, because there isn't one there. Okay, Esther then. Okay, 9.19 in Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Thou in thy great compassion didst not forsake them in the wilderness. The pillar of cloud did not leave them by day to guide them on their way, nor the pillar of fire by night to light them for the way in which they were to go. That is some deep stuff in Nehemiah. Listen, if you want a cool little thing that will confuse you at the end because they did all <laughs> sorts of shenanigans, Nehemiah is a great book. It's like, I think, 10 or 11 chapters. But there at the end, it gets a little weird because, oh, it's 13. Yeah, call me when you go through the end because it'll, you'll need some explanation. Go ahead. <laughs> Esther 919. I got a gem right here, everybody. Ooh, I bring it. Hold on. Hold on. Go ahead, Jim. Therefore, the Jews of the rural areas who lived in the rural towns make the 14th day of the month Adar. A holiday for rejoicing and feasting and sending portions of food to one another. Basically, Purim, Purim, the Esther feast where all the Jews got saved. Oh, ow, oh, yeah, you got the gem. That got the hi, Travis and Virginia. Did I say it right? Welcome to nine nineteen nineteen. Yes, and we started at nine nineteen. Yes. Okay, we're reading through all the scriptures mm -hmm. that are 919 from Genesis to Revelation. So hang on. Maybe we'll get something for you. Okay, I'm in Job. I love it. 919. If it is a matter of power, behold, he is the strong one. And if it is a matter of justice, who can summon him? Yes. All right, Jules, this is for you. <clears throat> Psalm 919 says... And the little subtitle is A Psalm of Thanksgiving for God's Justice. 
Wow. So verse 19 says, Whoa. Arise, O Lord, and do not let man prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. Nations being um, those against God at that point. Okay, now that you read it there, hold on. Read it also here. <clears throat> read we're given special uh, nuance for Jules. Jules is a policeman in the Pflugerville area. And so we hi we're highlighting him today in Psalm 919. In the Passion Translation is the next one to read. Drum roll, please. <clears throat> Lord, won't you now arise to judge and punish the nations who defy you? Aren't you fed up with their rebellion? Oh, crud. <laughs> Sounds a little uh, harsh, so you kind of have to know the heart and character of God. And he the is, context. He is then. not a uh, big bad eye in the sky waiting to uh, strike people down. No, we do that. Um. <laughs> we do that, and then we blame it on God. We did it then, and we blamed it on God. Seriously. Also, this is someone's heart cry to God, so just because someone cries out for something doesn't mean that that's describing the heart of so that's another thing to consider when you're reading that's right. scripture. That's right. Just because right. someone's like, God, bash my enemies in the face, which sometimes it says things literally like that, it doesn't mean God is going to do that. It just means the person is being vulnerable and authentic with God. And th That's right. And it doesn't mean that God had <laughs> come in their heart and said, now let's destroy them. No. <laughs> okay. Did you do Proverbs? I uh, there isn't one. Okay. Man, there's... Isaiah 19, 19. You're skipping a lot of little books. By the fury of the Lord of the host, the land is burned up, and the people are like fuel for the fire. No man spares his brother. Jeremiah 9, 19. Oh, man, you get good books. For, not that they're not all good. I'm sorry. For a voice of wailing <laughs> is heard from Zion. How are we ruined? We are put to great shame, for we have left the land because they have cast down our dwellings. Some of these are really intense. Yeah, they are. I'm going to the Bible beautiful. is the most uh, thrilling, adventurous book there is. It is not boring. There is blood. There is drama. There is romance. There's all kinds of things you could want. So there's also rape and murder and adultery. So if you ever think that you need a good book to read, you just private message me. I'll tell you what you can go to, and then you'll read it and go, oh my gosh, it's just as bad as PG-13. 919 and worse sometimes and worse sometimes well ezekiel didn't have a 919 hi charlotte oh, daniel. we are um you're going to daniel you're going to daniel then okay we are going through uh genesis Ooh, late night programming how awesome that's <laughs> right that's right this is late night programming oh, and yeah. we are this is late night 919 at 91919 19. and we got kind of silly and so um, we're reading all the scripture verses of 919 in the Bible. <laughs> we're skimming over some little books that don't have them. Yeah, they don't have them. <laughs> in these. I was like, wow, it ended on 918. Bummer. Okay, 919 for Daniel. <laughs> oh, Lord, hear. Oh, Lord, forgive. Oh, Lord, listen and take action. For thine own sake, O oh my God, do not delay, because thy city and thy people are called by thy name. Oh, I like that. We're going way over to Zechariah. Oh, no, that one, not even that one. Man, I'm skipping all these. Nothing books. Amos either. The little prophets. Obadiah. Nope. Thank Nothing in Micah. Let's go over to Matthew. That's sad. They go way over in the middle. Nothing in Zephaniah either. No, they're little books. What the hey? Okay, Matthew 9:19. Random trivia. Did you know that the book of Mark was actually apparently written before Matthew? So a little bit, a little piece of side note. Okay. Yeah. Um, Ooh, that'd be fun to take the, the one-year chronicle and do it that like that. Oh, I bet it tells a story. Matthew 9, 19. Jesus got up and began to follow him, and so did his disciples. Who was he following? Uh-huh. Context. If you have context, put it in. But reference the Matthew 9, 19. Okay, Mark oh, 919. He's going to heal people. And Jesus answered them and said, O oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? And how long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. 
Jesus was the first snap, you know? He's the first one who said, bring him to me. Just bring him to me. Bring him to me. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Luke 9.19. Luke was a doctor. <laughs> they answered and said, John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, but others that one of the prophets of old has risen again. Whoa. That is when Jesus said, but who do you say that I am? Whoa. Don't just tell me what they all think. What do you Would say? Yeah. That's so good. Uh, John 19. John 9.19. Oh, I'm going to read from the Voice Bible now. God bless. Keep up the good work, ladies. Time for me to get the flock out of here. Okay. Well, Jules, it was a pleasure. We'll see you another time. John, okay, I'm going to. That was a bad joke. Oh, got it. He would say, let's make like sheep. Anyways, that's okay. funny. Okay, John 919. I'm reading from the Voice Bible. Just a moment while I find the 19. If you've never um, read the Voice Bible before, it's excellent. It's in story. It's in story. It's really neat. Okay. Is this man your son, said the Pharisees? Do you testify that he has been blind from birth? How therefore does he now see, said the Pharisees? Hmm. Mm. Acts 9.19. <clears throat> I read this this morning as part of the doing another devotional, and then we read it again a while ago. Yeah, we did. But it says, and he took food and was strengthened. It's when Ananias uh, laid hands on Saul. Oh. Romans 9.19. I can hear one of you asking, then how can he blame us if he is the one in complete control? How can we do anything he has not chosen for us, meaning Jesus. 1 Corinthians 9.19 For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to all so that I may win more. I think you read that one earlier. That's a good one. Mm. 2 Corinthians 9.19 And there is more you should know. He has been handpicked by the churches to accompany us as we carry on this work of grace. All this is being done for the glory of the Lord. And to show our own goodwill. Mm. We're having a skip again. We're having a skip. Uh-oh. Skip, skip, skip. All the way over to skip Hebrews. Skip to 919. Skip, skip. I'm in Hebrews. Skip to 919. Skip, skip. Skip to 919. Jennifer's got the word. I'm in Hebrews. Hebrews. 919. For when every commandment had been spoken by Moses to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of the calves and the goats with the water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people. Okay. Do you know what that means? Are you asking me? Yeah. I would say it's a foreshadowing. Yes. Let, yeah, let's chat for a minute because only one more book's got anything to say. That's Revelation. <laughs> so let's, let's bring it on and down. Let's bring it on down. It's a scary Revelation uh, scary. chapter. Or verse. We're going to the, the scary books next. But okay, go back. 919. Oh, God. You can do the Revelation. Hey, for sure. Heck no. Okay, let me see what it says. In the voice Bible, <laughs> when Moses had given all the laws of God to the people, this out of Hebrews 919. Yes, we're stalling and pretending like we're academic scholars now. He took the blood of calves and of goats, water, hyssop, and scarlet wool, and he sprinkled the scroll and all the people. I'm going to go on into 20, telling them, this is the blood of the covenant that God has commanded for us. In the same way, he also sprinkled blood upon the sanctuary and upon the vessels used in worship. Under the law, it's almost the case that everything is purified in connection with blood. Without the shedding of blood, sin cannot be forgiven. Since what was given in the old covenant was the earthly sketch of the heavenly reality, this was sufficient to cleanse the earthly sanctuary. But in heaven, a more perfect sacrifice was needed. The anointed one did not enter into handcrafted sacred spaces, imperfect copies of heavenly originals, but into heaven itself, where he stands in the presence of God on our behalf. There, he does not offer himself over and over as a sacrifice, as the high priest on earth does when he enters the most holy place each year with blood other than his own, because that would require his repeated suffering since the beginning of the world. No, Jesus has appeared once now at the end of the age 
to put away sin forever by offering himself as a sacrifice. Just as mortals are appointed to die once and then to experience a judgment, not quite sure I agree with how that was written. The anointed one, our liberating king, was offered once in death to bear the sins of many and will appear a second time not to deal again with sin, but to rescue those who have eagerly awaited his return. I'll be going to the Mirror Bible now to read 919 in Hebrews. If you want to hang out for another minute, it might go good. You never know. 919 in Hebrews. Let's see what Hebrews has to say out of 919. Are y'all ready? For those of you who are bored at 10 p.m. at night on Thursday, I hope you're here with us. 919 Hebrews. After Moses uttered the detailed requirements of the law in the hearing of all the people, he would take the blood of calves and of goats, mix it with water, and dipping a bunch of hyssop bound with a scarlet wool into the blood basins, sprinkle the blood on the book and upon the people. While performing this cleansing ritual, Moses would solemnly declare, This is the blood of the covenant which God has made binding upon you. The same blood was then also sprinkled on the tabernacle, on all the furnitures, and the ministry utensils. Thus, according to the law, all purging was by means of blood. Forgiveness was specifically associated with the shedding of blood. The idea of closure to the particular case was communicated in the death of an innocent victim. The blood symbolizes this currency. If the methods of the law were only a shadow prefiguring the heavenly reality, the fulfillment of these examples surely requires a stronger and more efficacious sacrifice. In Christ, we have so much more than a type reflected in the tabernacle of holy places set up by human hands. He entered into the heavenly sphere himself where he personally represents mankind face to face with God. Neither was it necessary for him to ever repeat his sacrifice. The high priest under the old shadow system stood proxy with a substitute animal sacrifice that had to be offered every year. But Jesus did not have to suffer again and again since the fall of the world. The single sacrifice of himself in the fulfillment of history now reveals how he has brought sin to naught. Oh, wow. Well, check this out. This is just a thought. You can be, you know. The same goes for everyone. A person dies only once and then faces judgment. What if? What if that was really just saying? The same goes for everyone. You know, Jesus died once and he faced judgment. Christ died once and faced the judgment of the entire human race. His second appearance in his resurrection has nothing to do with sin, but to reveal salvation for all to fully embrace him. Oh my. This is a can of worms for me, but I'm going to have to pull back. We need to go to Revelation. For the law presented to us a faint shadow, outlining the promise of the blessings anticipated in the coming of Christ, even detailing its future of significance. The mere sketch, however, could never be confused with the actual object that it represented. The annual sacrificial rites as the shadow of the eventual object would always leave the worshiper feeling inadequate and be a reminder year after year of the sinfulness of mankind. Had it been possible to present the perfect offering that had the power to successfully remove any trace of a sin consciousness, then the sacrificial system would surely have ceased to be relevant. But in the very repetition of these ritual sacrifices, the awareness of guilt is reinforced rather than removed. The conclusion is clear. Animal sacrifices fail to remove anyone's sinfulness or their sin consciousness. So, when Jesus, the Messiah, arrived at the fulfillment of all the types and shadows, he quotes Psalm 40, 6-8, and says, In sacrifices and offerings God takes no pleasure, but you have ordained my incarnation. 
None of these prescribed offerings and sacrifices, including burnt offerings and sin offerings, were your request. Then I said, I read in your book what you wrote about me, so here I am. I have come to fulfill my destiny. Listen, Jesus came to fulfill the destiny of standing, <laughs> of being buried, crucified, buried, resurrected on behalf of mankind. On behalf of mankind. On behalf of mankind. He died as us. Now we can live as him on this planet. That's pretty stinking awesome. Um, the part that stood out to me was when it was saying basically the reinforcement of the sacrificing and just put it in their face all the time that they were sinners. And so to not have that sin consciousness anymore, we don't need to do that. We don't need to revisit all the rituals and all the, oh, I'm just a sinner and I have to pay some sort of penance or something like that um, because he did, he did that once and for all. So we don't have to have it in our face all the time. Because um, what did it do? Doing your little little Friday, we may not be able to go tomorrow anyway. But think about it for a minute what she just said. Yeah. If year by year by year by year by year, the sacrifices were to be a continual reinforcement of sinfulness, right? And then it said Jesus is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. The law, the sinfulness, the year by year by year by year by year sinfulness. If Jesus was the fulfillment of the sinfulness being reinforced, then would it not stand to reason that if you hear all the time what a sinner you are and how horrible you are, that that is more like the law being shoved in your face? Hey, you were, you, you are, but actually if Christ came and he died on our behalf, then we no longer are. Now, I'm not saying you don't feel like crap sometimes. I'm not feel, saying that you don't feel inadequate. I'm not saying you don't deal with low self-esteem sometimes. But in that place of inadequacy, we have a sacrifice. We, we, have, we have Jesus that lives inside of us now that says, Wait, I did that for you. Stand in my adequacy. Stand in my completeness. Stand in what I did. Don't look at who you used to be. Look at who I am. Because the I am lives inside you now. And if you concentrate on the I am... You won't feel so less. I interpreted her after she interpreted this because that's just kind of what I do. <laughs> yes. So, Charlotte, hold on. Can you imagine that continual reminder of sins until the next sacrifice? But the once and for all sacrifice covers it. All, every minute, every day, and so on. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And you know, it's so, um, it, it's taken me so long to, to get that. Amen. It's a constant battle to keep battling in the spirit that we may love our Savior more than our sin. Yeah. Well, true. But Kelly, what, what about, what about, a, what, what, um, look at it this way. It isn't that we love him more than our sin to me. Now, it might be if that's how you handle it, that's cool. You rock on. But, but maybe it's we, we look at our sin. You can love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. But if you keep looking at how inadequate, you keep referring to it, looking at how sinful you are, if you keep... Going, oh man, I look, oh man, I'm horrible. I'll, I'll never this, I'll never that. If you keep reinforcing that part of you instead of, I got this. I taught on this the other night or the other day. I think it was Wednesday. If you have a chance, Kelly, watch it. Because I talked about how here we are and here he is. And here, here we are. Okay? And sometimes we struggle with our identity. And we're always wiggling around. We're always wiggling. Wiggling, wiggling, wiggling. Looking at ourselves, looking at our sin, hitting ourselves with the head. Why, why, and all this crud. And, and Jesus is like, wait, 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 wait. If you'll just grip, if you'll just, 
if you'll just stay here with me, if you'll just stay here with me, look to me. Instead of wandering around, looking at how horrible you are, looking at how horrible things are, wondering how you're going to do this, how you're going to do that. But here I am. I, I'm with Jesus, and he and I are going to figure it out. I'm with the Father, and we're going to figure it out. I'm with the Spirit, and we're going to figure it out. Because the three living inside of me means I'm in union with them. And so I'm married. I'm married, and so we're going to figure it out. I'm in union, so I'm, I'm figuring it out. Instead of acting like you're not married, and you're full of crap, and you can't do anything, and all these things, and being traumatized, which we all do it. Come on, we all have issues. But staying here as close as you can, as close as you can, just, just return here. He has ransomed you already. He hasn't just ransomed you from seasons of dark times. He has ransomed you from everything that wasn't your true identity. He hasn't just ransomed you from bad things. He's ransomed you from the good things that counterfeit your true authentic self, which is only found in him. Does that make sense? It's, I'm just tweaking you just a little bit, honey. Just just a little. You got something. She I can had, tell. She had another comment for that, too. I don't Hold know. on. Let me go back. I'm just thinking about... Um, he is God. I choose him over my sin. My choice is he is so worthy. He makes me sinless. That's right, Charlotte. Excellent. And then Kelly... Just a second, we're going to hear what Janice is saying. Amen. I hear and receive you, sister. I praise God for him. Ransom me from my seasons of dark. Yes, she says, keep my eyes upon Jesus. Like the song, me and Jesus, we got our own thing going. You do. But remember, it's not just your... Listen. Okay. For fear of talk. But let's say this is Jesus. If I'm looking in his eyes, if I'm this close to looking in Jesus' eyes... You better bet I'm going to get into his pockets, too. Whoa. I'm very you bet I'm going to get into his pocket. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to grab a hold of him. I'm going to have everything he's got. It's it's not just looking. If you're just looking at him in the eye, I'm looking at his eye, and that's good. But you're not going to get anything looking in his eyes, man. you got to get all up close and personal and get what you need and get what you want. Get what you want. Get who he is because you're one. You're in here. You can't just look in his eyes without getting in his pockets, too. I am the head and not the No, you're not the head. And you're not the tail. You know what you are instead? You're just blessed. Even, even the head and the tail is actually still part of the curse. It's still part of the old covenant. Listen, it's just Jesus, baby. It's just Jesus. It's not head, it's not tail, it's not beginning, it's not end, it's not up, it's not down. It's just married. It's so different. You're just married. And you're just at peace. Because you're married. And you're filled with him. And he's filled with you. And so that's just the end of it. It's the beginning and the end of it. It's the beginning and the end of it. It's not your any label. The labels of the old covenant ended. They all ended. Now, it's just Jesus. So, if you're interested, you text me and I will send you uh, just keep watching the videos, Kelly. Just keep watching, keep listening, and just remember it's just Jesus. Anytime you try to refer to the Old Covenant for anything, you refer to the Old Testament for anything. Honey, it's just Jesus. Hold on, Jen. I don't want Jen to lose what she's saying, but she's moving fast, man. <laughs> Son and Holy Spirit dwelling in me, and that has taken hold like you would not believe. Father, Son, and Spirit, huh, Charlotte? It's the three living with you, the one. You're married to all three. I am being informed tonight of new light. Oh, I so do. <laughs> It's so cute. Oh, you're so precious. Hey, listen. It, it's because, Kelly, it's because the law and everything the prophets said, which they prophesied the coming of the Messiah, right? It's because everything the law 
taught, tutored, made you guilty of, feel sin, sinful in. That and everything the prophets said to say Jesus is coming. When Jesus actually came and did what he did, then all of that was fulfilled. So does it make sense now, Kelly, that saying you're the head and not the tail doesn't make sense now because that was part of the old covenant, right? That was part of the blessings and the curses. It's, it's not just the curses you no longer have. It's also those blessings. Those were all inadequate. No, it's just Jesus. It's different. I'm learning. I'm growing. I don't know it all. I got, I, I got verbiage. I got good teachers, and I'm listening, and I'm writing notes, and I'm paying attention. There's just so much more than we think. That's all. Does that make sense? So it's not just a part or a piece. Now you know it's whole now. In a nutshell, what I'm hearing from you. We still have Revelation. We just still want to finish that. And then we could pray a little bit. No, that's good. Now what she just said, the fullness. So it says that Jesus came in the fullness of time. Like the fullness of time. To fulfill Can you just imagine being Jesus? And you know your assignment. It's to come to earth and to ransom mankind. Can you imagine? We were worth it. You were worth it. He didn't get crucified, buried, and resurrected just so you could be the head and not the tail. See? You see how inadequate a description it is to, to say you're the head? When you're married to the creator of the universe. You know? It's, that's not just a tweaking. That's a whole mind shift. That's a whole different way of looking at things. Meditate on that, Kelly. Meditate on being married to the one who created the universe. Meditate on Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Here they are. Here you are. Meditate on you being like this. And I mean meditate. Lay on the floor and think about it. Chew on it. And let him pour into you a truth about you that's based on what he's done for you. Because everything he is is now who you are. And receiving that and shifting so that when you look in the mirror, you don't see just see Jesus. Well, I look in the mirror and I see Jesus, and it's all spiritual. But you look in the mirror and you see Jesus looking at you, looking back at you, and looking back, and you looking at him and him looking at you because you're one. It's so beautiful to me. And I'm so learning and I'm so growing. And there's so much. There's so much to Jesus. There's so much to this supernatural word. It dawned on me the other day. I don't know if I... I don't think I told you. But I, I was thinking the other day, and I think I said this in my teaching. I thought to myself, you know, this is our earthly place, our earthly realm, right? Well, and then there's these other realms, Right? I mean, there's the heavenly realm, and it doesn't even say one realm. If you, when you read them, it actually says realms. So there are other, other places in the supernatural world, 
And I just wonder if this is all there is to meet the eye. These are things I ask myself, you know. Is, is, this, is this our only access? If Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all three live inside the creator of the universe, the spirit of truth, the Father who architected, the architect of all, if those three live inside you and you're married, I got a feeling there's much more available than just what we think. Um, Kelly, when she was talking to you about the head and tail and we were talking about a piece versus or a part versus the whole or the fullness now, I kind I just got this picture of if you ever take communion elements, if you ever have, you know, a piece of what it could be whatever, but usually we use potato chips. Usually in our culture, it's some sort of bread or cracker or some breadish item. And then there's some sort of wine or juice product. <clears throat> they're usually served in very tiny little increments. Probably because they're often served corporately when there's a lot of people and <laughs> it's just a lot of elements needed. <clears throat> but what I just saw for you, in, like if you would just meditate on, even if you do, whether or not you actually take communion elements physically, <clears throat> think about, it's not just a little teeny symbol. His blood goes on and on and on and on and on. Any, any one attribute of God is an infinite. He is infinitely that. So him being um, Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. He's not just a little bit of peace. He's infinite peace to the utmost degree of peace that there possibly ever could be. Um, all, the, all of his compound names, Jehovah, fill in the blank, Jehovah Nisi, he is our banner, the Lord our banner. So he that doesn't just cover us for a moment or cover us this much and we can get outside of it. He is our infinite banner that goes on and on and on. So any one element or attribute of God you can meditate on forever because he's He's 100% infinite in that, in that attribute. So when you're meditating on the topic of communion, it's not just you taking a little gulp. It's what is that? I'm literally partaking of more than an ocean of this that he has done, that he has poured out freely, and it's still pouring out. Mm. Um, his blood is still speaking a better word over your life. It's still literally singing that song over you. And so I just got that picture for you specifically, that if you would just go with, go to him with that um, concept of, of communion elements and it's not just a little shot or a little nibble it's like what am I actually part what is the symbol of what I'm really partaking of because it goes on and 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 I would even encourage you if you actually literally physically take those elements look inside the cup or the glass or whatever you have even if it's this big <laughs> whatever size you're doing um, look in it and ask yourself what do I see and you would be amazed at the revelation that can come just from you looking into the elements because your spiritual eyes will see things that you've never noticed before. And there's always something new that he is um, awakening us to. So I just, I just specifically felt, I hope it makes sense to encourage you with that. And then um, <clears throat> with communion, think about what communion means. Let's think about words. There's communication. There's community. There's union. So y you are, listen, the, the, it seems, it appears that many times the church model of communion is to get before God with your wafer and your little package of blood and to concentrate on your sins and think about how bad you've been and ask him to forgive you so that then you can drink this and be cleansed. So you can be worthy to take it. Yes. Oh, yes. Penance. Worthy to take it. So this is just a little tweaking. Y'all can shoot me down if you'd like. I don't have all the revelation on these things. I'm just offering some thoughts. 
What if what Jesus Christ did on the cross was enough? What if his release of mankind's sin and the guilt that went with it was enough? What if what if everything he did on our behalf was enough? And what if when we come before him, we literally come before him thanking him for healing and thanking him for forgiveness instead of asking him for healing and asking him for forgiveness. What if the wafer is a symbol of what now, what he's already done? Now, granted, there was a time when that didn't, then that wasn't the case, correct? The law and the prophets, all that took place for all that time. But then enter Jesus, who has already been crucified, buried, and resurrected. So if he is already fulfilled all of that, then it seems to me that you just thank him for it. So what if the, the covenant, the, the, uh, the bread, the blood, is a place of celebration instead of a place of penance? And what if, what if, you can really shoot me on this one, what if, so if I remember correctly, the tithe was part of the old covenant, was it not? Well, if the, if, if the law and the prophets have already been fulfilled, it seems to me the tithe is no longer what we give. I mean, come on, people. Jesus owns it all anyway. Hello. Giving him just 10%, that was just a little, a little thing. What if now he just says, hey, I trust you. I bless you. Be generous. What if now you hear his voice to give? Be generous. What if it's not a law of giving anymore? What if it's not a law of giving, but now it's a receiving? Just receiving. Just receiving. So, no longer tithing, but being generous, which is more than tithing or whatever he tells you. No longer asking him to heal you or asking him to forgive you, but receiving that healing and receiving that forgiveness and celebrating what he did already on your behalf and as you. And there's another area really uh, when Paul brings a uh, correction and says, hey, why are you still doing sacrifice? He says, "Why? Why are you still? Um, why are you still serving the feast? Why are you observing all of this when that was just a symbol? And here I am. I'm the substance, right? It was done. It's not being done. That is correct. You're getting it. You're getting it, Kelly. And listen, you can get it one day, and a week later, you'll be thinking, huh?" I know he showed me this. What was it he showed me? <laughs> but if you understand what he has already done on your behalf, groveling at the feet of Christ, it, it, it's not his jam. Um, church likes to offer that as a model. But if you have been co-crucified, co-buried, and co-resurrected in Christ with him, then, and he did this for us, on our behalf, with us, then why would we ever grovel? We would celebrate. We would be thankful. Oh my gosh, Jesus, the most amazing person, the most amazing of anything and everything. Come on. But we're family. He's our brother. He's our Lord. 
We are now priests and kings also. And we walk on the planet to implement the kingdom of God on this planet. Whatever your vocation is, whether you're called to ministry, whether you're called to be in the marketplace, they're both the same. The sacred and the secular, are the, they're all sacred. It's all sacred. There isn't one over the other. Even the five-fold ministry, honestly, when Jesus, Jesus is like, hey, hey, look to me. Don't look to them. Look to me. Have a relationship with me. Don't go through them. I'm not saying be in rebellion. Come on. But being, these are just to, to grow us. We're just to equip people in the ministry. Equip people to know the Father so they can move forward in their life with Christ. Um, I think it was Charlotte that had a comment a minute ago. Charlotte, what you got? Let me go back. It was, it was several ago. Hi, David. <clears throat> I didn't really get to read the thing. I hope I'm not losing anything. I'm not really. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Deborah. I'm looking. We're looking for a comment in just a second. Okay. Uh, we might have missed the last. Hi, Debbie. One. Come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain. Mm -hmm. I think that was the one. One more back. Hold on. We're just, we've been chatting. This is way back then. Hi, McDonald. Hi, Wes. Hi, Frank. It was way back then. Back. He established our worth by coming to earth. Sacrificial love entered the earth. What you got, Jen? That's good. Well, I just had it, I saw it go by and I wanted to see what she said. That's really good. That reminds me of um, the price. Something's worth is determined by the price that someone will pay for it. Um, this pen, somebody out there might pay a dollar for this pen. They're not really into purple. They don't like this kind of gel pen or whatever. Somebody else might think, I love those pens. I'd pay up to like 10 bucks for that pen. That's amazing. Somebody on the planet might just think, to me, that pen's worth like $3,000. <laughs> and then I might think, that's ridiculous. It's a pen. <laughs> but you know what? Weirder things auction for much higher prices true that, that to me aren't worth five dollars. That's true. So um, the price, the price that was paid for your not just your life, or that you won't go to hell or whatever. Your lifetime. Yes. But for that union and for that that him wanting to be one with you, or God wanting to be one with you. <laughs> Um, he determined that you were worth his very life. What What's more costly than the blood of than his blood? There's you would you would think oh blood or me hmm blood but no we're equal because that's the price that uh, and that determined our worth. So that's who that's what that reminded me of. He established our worth. Excellent. Yeah. And you know I I will that that's good. That is something that um, I'd say gets the most, I get the most flack over. And I'm going to go ahead and go forward now. Yeah, so I don't miss anything. Apologize just a second if I'm in your face. I apologize if I'm in your face. Hallelujah. Um, so listen. Hi, Ann. So listen, this is the thing. So um, <clears throat> it is typical for most churches and don't hang up until you hear me three, okay? Don't don't get an attitude and hang up on me. Come on, it's 1030 at night. You got That's nothing else to do. Say. You wouldn't be up talking. So listen, <clears throat> most, many churches make a relationship with Jesus Christ about going to heaven or going to hell. So it's a threat. So either you get to know Jesus or you're going to go to hell. Amen. Right? Let me ask you a question. Praise Teresa. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Why would anybody want to be married to anybody who was threatening them? Why? Why would anybody want to be bullied to have a relationship? Why would anybody want to be bullied to get married? If, if your relationship with, with Jesus... With the Father, with the Son, with the Spirit. <coughs> Excuse me. If your relationship 
is all about whether or not you're going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell, then please forgive me, but that's not a relationship. That is zero relationship. Do you hear me? That's not a relationship. Jesus did not shed his blood just so you don't go to heaven and just so you don't go to hell. Jesus shed his blood to restore relationship with the Father with mankind. It's all about the communion. Listen, why do you think we do communion? Now, we screw up communion and we make it all about let's com confess our sins and be worthy to take communion. But Jesus was the communion. He was the sacrifice. He was, he was, listen, the bread and the blood, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. That's why in this Catholic church, it is so freaking strong and amazing and awesome. They're like, this is real. This is a real thing. They at least understand what those symbols meant. They were real. They were real. So listen, if if the, the reality of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, being ransomed, okay, being ransomed, giving his life, surrendering his life is just about you going or not going to hell, then I'm sorry, but I don't think I want to be married to him. Why would I want to be married to somebody who's threatening me with anything? Anything. That's just a control freak. And one thing I know about God, walking with God almost 30 years, Jesus, the Father and the Son and the Spirit, none of them are control freaks. None of them. Those three live inside me, the one, and we are one. We are married, and we have full partnership. It's not just me, and there's Jesus. Oh, okay, okay, whatever you want me to do, Jesus. Whatever you want me to do, God. Which is what people act like every Sunday in church, and every Wednesday, and every Tuesday, and just about any other time they enter in the door. Whatever you want me to do. And guess what? They treat the pastors like that too. Whatever you say. Oh, yeah, whatever you want to do. The holy men. The holy men of God, or the holy women of God, or whatever. Scratch all that. Don't get mad. This is my point. It's about relationship with God. It is all about relationship with the Father. The Son is all about relationship with the Father and all about us having a relationship with the Father. Does it ransom us from something? Of course. But what's more important, what we've been ransomed from or what we ransomed to? Given to the Father, being married, that, that is the inheritance. Full inheritance. Because Jesus already died. We have full inheritance. Listen, start reading the Bible for yourself and stop just listening to a pastor. And read it like a first century Jew. And go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts and, and read it as if you're living it. And every time you stop and you put yourself in America and say, this is happening later, you better stop and go, mm, no, he was, he was talking to them. He wasn't talking to us. Go back and reread it from a first century Jew. Read it. Seriously, read it. True. Oh, my. You're getting personal, baby. And that's okay. Don't mind. It's late night. I'm not going to read this out loud, though. Bless your heart. Are you? Do you live in um, Houston, Kelly? Are you local, Kelly? Let me know. Go ahead. Just that those those the. Did you read that? I I knew I was reading. Yeah. That, but okay, go ahead. In the meantime, while everybody's getting ready to go. Yeah. Um, uh, the the bread and wine. Those are marriage elements, and in mm -hmm. the uh, Jewish custom. The, the the man who was wanting a particular woman to be his bride after he went through a certain number of other there's other steps involved but this particular part he would literally take a drink of the cup and offer it to the woman if she received it and drank from that cup it would we we in the west think of engagement as like kind of a, a more serious commitment but we're not really married yet, so people can still break off their engagement or, you know, 
some people take it more seriously, but there's kind of still an out. But in that culture, it was very serious. And so when she drank the cup, she was basically saying, um, I'm saying yes to everything. We're drinking from the same cup. So I'm saying yes to mm. all the joys. I'm saying yes to all the suffering we're going to encounter together. I'm saying yes to all of you. So they were basically married at that point. The only thing they would wait on was the physical consummation later. And so there were other preparations that took place. So, But I just was thinking about that in that moment, that they're, they're, they're marriage elements. It's not just a, take a little shot and move on and hope your sins are forgiven. It's, it's that union of what's mine is yours and what's yours is mine, and, and you can't separate um, from the inness cup of what we're sharing together. Because he's already in. He's already drank. I mean, even if you think about when he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane before he went to the cross, he, he referenced taking the cup. And he chose that cup because he was like, yes, I'm in. <laughs> and so um, I just think that's really wonderful. It's intense and deep. Yes, it is. So the Jewish people understood... And, and they, they knew. They knew. And those whose eyes were willing to be open, they understood who Jesus was. Because they'd heard about him for uh, centuries. And so for them, some of them whose eyes were open, there was no surprise. It was like, oh my. Oh my, oh my. Right? Right? Communion, yeah. one in the Father, Son, and Spirit, and the Father, Son, and Spirit, one in us. That's marriage, that's union. That's not just three inside of us, the one. That's the three and the one become one. And uh, that is in Colossians, where it says very clearly that the Godhead lives inside of mankind. So, you might think just the Holy Ghost lives inside of you, but you're missing the other two, man. Yeah, you're missing the other two. What about the Father? What about the Son? Listen, ask the Father to comfort you, Kelly. Um, listen, I'm fixing to just, you can all hang up if you want to. You listen to me, Kelly. You are beautiful, and you're amazing, and there's nobody like you. And I'm sorry what has happened to you. It just sucks. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. But you know what? You're not horrible. You're not horrible. I just release you from all the shame, all the guilt, all the emotions that are struggling you, that are reminding you all the time, the frequencies that remind you where you were bullied and all the other crap that took place, I just release you and bless you. I release you and bless you. And I just remind you, you know, when you lay your head in bed tonight, I want you to lay there and I want you to see yourself co-crucified, co-buried, co-resurrected. I want you to see yourself raised with Christ, not just some spiritual, Whoa! no, see yourself raised with him. See him living inside of you. See the Father, Son, and Spirit, all three living inside you. See them resident in you. See them making their home in you. You making your home in them. See that you truly are not alone. See that you truly do have wisdom. You see that you truly do have the goods. See that you truly do have the equipment that you need to move forward because Father, Son, and Spirit live inside of you. And you are not junk and you are not second class and there's nothing wrong with you. Nothing. You're awesome. And whatever you did, if you screwed something up, then, you know, we have all screwed up. That's why we got ransomed because we've all been screwed up and we're going to screw up again. We've been ransomed. And so we have been forgiven. And so you move forward as if you never did anything. It does not help to have any shame. It doesn't help to feel condemned. All it does is make you feel like crap. And when you feel like crap, all you do is look at yourself instead of looking at him. So, right? So you dismiss it. Return. 
return. Remember, when you start looking at you and trying to wiggle out of things, he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's like, nope, I got you. I'm not leaving you. Here you are squirming. Oh, I'm horrible. Oh, they hate me. I've got all this happening to me. And he's like, just come. Just rest with me. Just rest. Just rest. remembering you know he he's always gave me love mm. but only with love um because as i say that i remember not everybody likes to be gazed at <laughs> um <clears throat> but all he wants is for us to just return his gaze and then um wow. i was thinking of some song lyrics that say you are closer than the very oxygen i'm breathing in mm-hmm. and it's it's about he really isn't going anywhere, and so it's up to us whether we want, we want to engage with that or not, engage with him, but he is has already chosen to take up residence in you, and so, um, yeah. Wow. Listen. Yeah. He doesn't remind us of our past, so do we. Why do we? That's true, Charlotte. Yeah. This has been intense. We started out having a good old fun time, but it ended up like normal, pondering. Yeah, we can still finish with Revelation. It was technically Hebrews was mine, so we can go over there and okay. finish off the night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> On 9, yeah. 19, 19. Yeah, we'll read Revelation to close. But you're right. He doesn't remind us of our past. I don't know why we do. Why, and, and why do we remind others of theirs? You know? I don't know. Letting go and moving on. Yes. You know what, honey? One thing I know about life is that um, um, people usually don't accuse anybody of something that they either aren't feeling guilty of themselves or don't already have living inside of them. So anybody who throws you away, basically feel like they're they are a throwaway. You know, and when you can look at it that way, um, it helps you redirect your your thoughts so that you don't just look at you and think of you as being less than anything. It also keeps you from pointing the finger at them and telling them how horrible they are. Because the truth is, is we all have issues. Somebody's issues might look like this person who controls is looking for somebody to control. And this person needs to be controlled to feel safe, so they look for somebody to control them. You know, if somebody's abusing somebody, somebody over here probably feels like they deserve to be abused. And so it's just all these things that Mrs. Gregory... That's precious. That is precious. So, more than likely, he just feels like crap about himself, and he's trying to figure it out. It's not personal, and I know it feels personal, and I'm not taking lightly. I'm just saying you you get to rise up higher, and you get to see yourself by the power of the Holy Spirit, and you get to rock on. She's going to say one more thing. I'm going to read, and then we're going to close before my phone dies. That's what I want to say. I'm glad you're lifted with hope, honey. Aw, you're precious, honey. If it was just for you, it was worth it, babe. Go ahead, honey. I'll say that um, thank you, first of all, for the encouragement that what we share is a blessing. Um, But just know, and I just sense this really strongly to remind you that that same rock that you are sensing that we are on, you are also on in some ways anyway. It's not, you don't have a junior Holy Spirit or, you know, a mini Jesus or a half walk with God or anything like that. Um, We have plenty of things we're walking through as well. Um, But we know where the truth comes from. And so all it really takes, again, is just that, it's like, you know, when you have a compass and you know this is north and you just kind of start going this way, it's like, let's just go back to north, let's just recalibrate. 
and and it's a practice. And sometimes I do that really well, and other times it's a struggle. And so just know that um, we're all in this in this together, but we're yeah. all moving and forward in the same direction. Amen. And He is no greater in one person than in another. Um, I'm not leaving you out. I'm not in you with that because I don't like it. So I'm going to leave with something else. <laughs> and, um, yeah, just be encouraged in the Lord. But we love you and we bless you. I'm going to try one more translation because the other one is a horrible translation. I don't like it. I didn't understand it. I'm not reading it. Oh, this one's okay. The other one was just long for the sentence. I'm like, it made no sense to me. I was like, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Revelation 9.19, for the lethal power of the horses was in their mouths and their tails, and their tails had snakes' heads that inflict injuries. That's why I didn't want to read it. <laughs> Do you know what that means? I have a different take on Revelation. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure you would be able to, to share that. Yeah. So still working through new shifting in my theology. Yeah. God and I are working on some things. Love you all. It's so true what you're saying. Good night. Good night, Miss Ann. It's so good to see you, Ann. I have not seen you in years. It is a pleasure. Really, truly, it is a pleasure. God bless you. God bless y'all. Love y'all. Listen, tomorrow, we usually have Friday Fellowship, Friday Friendship, around 10 but um there's been a little change so this might be the substitute for it or we might show up around noon we'll let you know we love you sister god bless you all a hundredfold it just it has been oh you're precious honey god bless y'all god bless y'all hey be sure and put your notifications to go live whenever we come on and then when we're random, you can be with us. And happy 9-19-19. Amen. Got a little an hour left of it. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Bye-bye, Charlotte. I'm so glad. I'm so glad, Ann. That's wonderful. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I'm so glad that we got to hang out together. It's like being in the living room together. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> Until soon. We love you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>